Okay, well, here's my photograph of the peppers. And things like peppers are really awkward to draw, uh, especially when they're leaning over like this. So best tip I can give anybody is to draw a square. So what I've done is I've measured the width of the pepper and the height of the pepper. And the width is slightly bigger than the height. So I've drawn two lines down here intersecting the very extreme edge of the pepper here. And I've drawn one along the base here which intersects the base of the pepper and then drawn another one here which forms an exact square and as you can see it falls just a little bit short at the top and this is extremely helpful when uh, it comes to drawing. So if I just try this point here for example this is where this curve intersects this edge it's about a third of the way up put a little mark there. This intersects probably about here in between a third and a half and this one is just below half there, about there. And the sort of tangent if you like here or the peak of this curve is more or less halfway along. So I can quite easily now just draw that curves and then turn straight roughly up there, comes across here and then round and then this comes round there's a little dip in it here it comes across and then down touches the square there and then it rises across here and round and as you can see now we're starting to get somewhere this comes across here Round there like that, the stem is coming from about here, crosses the edge of the square about there, so that curls up and round and comes outside like that. And then you've got the edge of the stalk there. So it's like anything else, if you set off to draw it, without considering the shapes it can be really awkward and this is a really helpful way of drawing so what you could do is you could draw a box around that one or you could draw a box around this one and do the same thing but basically once you've got the first one done the others should be able to should be able to make sense of the others in relation to what you've uh, the first one you've drawn something along those lines i'm just doing this quickly now just as a as an idea and then this yellow one comes out from here and here comes up and round and down and then out again and so on the stalk coming out here so Hopefully that's a good tip for how to get these things drawn in the first place because the shape is very awkward. Now we're going to get on to doing the drawing and putting some paint on. Right, well I've been busy testing colours and uh, let me just give these a little stir because they're just separating. So I put out three blobs of lemon yellow and some ultramarine here and some burnt umber. So this first mix here, I'll just give that a stir, you can see that is giving me a really light green, there's quite a lot of water in that, it's quite loose. This second one here which looks blue at the moment, let me just give that a stir. I've put some stronger element of ultramarine, in fact I might put a little bit more in that. So this is thicker, it doesn't have quite as much water in it and this is lemon yellow and ultramarine. But this third mix here is lemon yellow again with ultramarine, but I've put some burnt umber in it, which thickens it and makes it a much darker, warmer colour. Now, that's the palette ready. I'm going to show you now how I've managed to decipher which colours I should be using for this green pepper. I'm going to show you a little trick for this. You look at that green pepper and you know it's green. But if you look at it carefully, you'll see areas in the green pepper which are lighter and darker. And then there are some where it's really light, like we've got these light patches 
reflecting off the shiny surface of the pepper. It's quite obvious when you look at it that the, this green on the top of the stalk here is much lighter, but it's very heavy here. And it's almost, almost black. How do we decide how to mix these colours? Unfortunately, the yellow pepper and the red pepper and all of the shades within that green pepper are very much distracting us from able, being able to judge the individual colours. So here's a great tip. Get a piece of paper, fold it, and then just cut out some little notches and then unfold it so that you've got some individual apertures like this. And you'll be quite surprised when you put this down. And hopefully you can see this on the video. Let's use the middle one there. In fact, we'll use this end one here. As I move this round the green pepper, you can see quite clearly at the edge there, that's a light green colour, but it's quite a bluey green. It's not a bright uh, light green. And as I move it round here, there I've got the same colour again, and again on the stalk I've got the same colour. But as we move it round the pepper, as we get to that really dark section there, that is a really deep, deep green. So what I've done is, to decipher what these greens are, I've just shown you the palette. So with the first green, the light one, let's just pop the bit of paper over, I'll just use the small hole, let's put a, the bit of paper over a light part of the pepper. Let's say just there. And that's my first, that's my first colour. I'm not too fussed about getting these absolutely perfect. So long as they are reasonable. And then just an area where the green is a little bit darker. That's my mid green, which is this one here. This is the one that I mixed in the middle. Which is a little bit darker and a little bit thicker. And then if we go to the point of the pepper where it's really dark, that's where I've mixed this deep one with the burnt umber in it to try and get that really dark. And as you can see, that's pretty much exact. So that's how I match colours. That's how I mix. So let's get on to doing a little bit of painting. Now I'm working flat again here because I'm going to pre-wet the pepper. So I'll just ignore the stalk, we'll just work on this, the main body of the pepper. So if I just run some water into here, how much water? Well what this water is doing is it's just allowing me to pre-wet the paper, which will just give me a little bit more time to get this painted before it starts drying and also will help to disperse the paint, help me to blend it. I'm using a one of my spearhead number eight round brushes here. So there's not an enormous amount of water on that, but I've just swizzled the brush across it to try and even it out. So now the opening green. If we just flash this in, all the way across the whole pepper, particularly focusing on the areas where it is lighter. I don't particularly need to worry about this central area because I'm going to be putting some dark paint in there before long. So let's just make sure we've got a good representation of this opening green. Now I know that looks a little bit vivid at the moment, but it's going to become less vivid as we introduce the darker green. So let's go to this middle green now, which is thicker and darker. And I'm going to start in this central area here and just work my way out. So working along this bottom edge here and along here. Now here is where we've got a transition there. It's a bit lighter just there, so I'm going to run that paint into there. And we'll just 
come down here with it and again just around that bottom edge it's really sharp and dark in there and across here so this is a bit time consuming the reason uh, again that I put the water on to start with is because it just gives me that little bit more time before this starts drying up and I'm going to try and paint this all in one all in one go and I, in, in a minute I'm going to show you how I'm going to use the paintbrush to lift some paint out again so if I can just try and decide that where there's going to be a couple of white flashes there and there Okay, so that's the main body of the sort of what I would call the light and the mid greens on there. And now I'm going to just plunge into the dark stuff and get that on in this central area here where it needs to be. Which is here and again inside here. Hopefully you can see, as I put the darker stuff on, how the actual shape of the pepper is now being formed by, it's actually being formed by the light. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what, this is actually in my book, The Watercolour Enigma, and I call this wash and dab. Because what I want to do now is I want to, wash this heavy paint out of the brush and try and smooth off some of the transitions on the pepper so what I do is I give the brush a really good wash there's a bit of kitchen roll here and I just give it the lightest touch on this kitchen roll you're probably better off using a rag but I've just got this kitchen roll to hand and once I've taken off the excess water from this clean brush I can now just start feathering the brush over and you have to keep washing it and just taking that excess water off because if you if you add water to this it will it will flood it so if I can just try and smooth out some of those transitions like that and I'm just having another quick glance at my pepper so I'm on the photograph so I'm basically going to put the brush back into the dark paint and add some darker areas again here got a bit hollow This is actually the darkest area just here. And again, I shall wash, wash the brush and just dab it just to get rid of the excess. What this is doing is it's just getting rid of the excess water, keeping the brush neutral so that I can just smooth out these edges here. That doesn't look too bad. What I am actually going to do now is wash the brush and squeeze it now. Squeeze it hard, which gets rid of all of the water. And this brush will now lift paint off. And will give me a little white flashes that I want. Squeeze it hard, and it's like a little vacuum cleaner. It takes the takes the paint back off the paper. Keep washing it. There's a little bit here where 
I've got a little bit too much paint so I can just pull the paintbrush down across there a little bit too much so just constantly squeezing the brush it takes paint back out again now then I've got uh, a bit over here to do paint is starting to settle down now I think I'm going to leave it at that because there's a danger of, of it becoming overworked. Just take a little bit off there actually. Okay, I'm going to leave that at that and hopefully you can see that looks uh, not exactly like the photo but a pretty good rendition of a green pepper. Right, that's dried off. It's just faded a little as it's dried. Uh, for the red pepper, I'm just going to tell you what I've mixed for this. I've actually put out some alizarin crimson, some light red and some ultramarine. The alizarin, I've just added a tiny bit of the light red to it just to stop it being quite so pink. But the ultramarine, I've added light red to and this gives me this really lovely deep plum colour. And that's the colour uh, that I'm going to use for the darker parts of the red pepper, which I'm now going to paint. Okay, so what I've done there is I'm, I've just put the uh, mixers uh, onto here in exactly the same way as I did with the green pepper. I've added the dark plum colour, which I'm just finishing off adding that now. And I just want to show you again how, even though I've used this dark plum colour, this pepper still looks bright red because that's the colour of the highlights. So just put a little bit more in here and round there and I'm just gonna just do the same as before wash the brush give it a dab and I'll just try and smooth off some of these transitions and then I'm going to pick out the highlights on the pepper again now by washing the brush and giving it a really good squeeze and now I'm just going to trace where these lighter bits are coming down here down to here coming all the way up here and out and then down again if I just keep squeezing the brush Repeating that, it will take more and more paint out. And then when it's actually dry, because I'm using Bockingford paper, I can take more paint out than... I'm doing now. I'll show you this once it's dry. This is dried now and uh, I want to just incre increase the intensity of these white areas. Uh, and again because I'm using Bockingford paper the, it allows me to take paint off again. So this is a flat brush. I've just wet it. Okay and I'm just going to ease the brush across. Give it a little wet with the brush and just dab it with the kitchen roll. I don't want to overwork, don't want to overwork it too much because I don't want to take off too much paint and make it look like a big white stripe. But I can just give it a little scrub with this brush and just ease off the amount that I want. There's quite a significant shine right down the centre of this pepper. Which 
which I can just again create by taking it off with a wet brush what that's happening here is the wet brush just reactivates the paint on the paper and allows me just to take that off with the kitchen roll the kitchen roll just absorbs it and takes it off the paper okay now keep that'll do for the red one and i'm going to treat the yellow one in exactly the same way for the yellow pepper I'm just using lemon yellow and raw sienna. So if you actually put the little little uh, cutout aperture over the pepper, you'll see none of it is quite as bright as this one here. So that's lemon yellow, which is really sharp. If we add a little bit of raw sienna to that, it warms it up and gives us a much more realistic colour. And then this second one, I'm going to put a lot more raw sienna in this and this will give me the colour that I need for the darker areas. More like yellow ochre. In fact, if you've got a tube of yellow ochre, you could, you could use that. So those are the two that I'm going to use now to create the shades on the yellow pepper. Right, just to finish this off, I'm going to ground the peppers on the uh, white tablecloth, which is what they were sat on, and paint some shadow underneath. So for this, I'm going to just put some water, nice clean water, again using the number eight brush, and I'm going to put this quite extensively right the way around the base of the whole thing because I'm going to use that water to fade the shadow into it and I've mixed a little bit of ultramarine and burnt umber together to give me a nice grey nice warm grey colour I'm not quite touching the peppers with that as you can see I'm just spreading the water out into this region below and then if I pick up some of this grey, I can drop that in right in here. This is on the underside of the peppers. I'll come all the way around here and a little bit around here, going right up to the edge. And you can see by just gently scrubbing the brush from side to side, I can just fade that into the water below. And then I'm just going to go back in and get a little bit more and intensify that immediately in here, in this little corner where there isn't much light getting in there. Just fade that away just a little bit more right in there and now just to finish off I'm going to wash the brush and dab it which is washing it getting rid of the excess water off the brush but not draining it so again that's just a little dab on the rag just to get rid of the outside uh, water and then we'll just literally feather the brush from side to side and that just helps us to fade it and smooth it off and I'm not going to fiddle with that anymore I'm going to leave that as it is so that's my painting of three peppers are still life it's not uh, what I normally do it is quite difficult uh, just keeping control of the fluid paint and adding the darker paint and the stronger paint and keeping control of it is quite a tricky thing to do so uh, if you want to have a go it might require several tries it is something that takes some practice uh, if you do have a go i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you on another video thanks for watching bye bye